Hey everyone, welcome back. I wanted to share a project with you that uh, I've been tracking for quite some time. Uh, I noticed that there was actually no videos on YouTube about it and I was really shocked because this project is phenomenal. What, the, what they are doing is uh, just great. So I quite like uh, single board computers. I'm quite prone to uh, having a good collection of them and this here is the uh, NanoPi R6S, no this is the R5S, this is the NanoPi R4S and then this is the NanoPi R6S, so that's three SP SPCs. Now the NanoPi R5S has two 2.5 gig uh, LAN ports and then a 1 gig WAN port and this can run OpenWRT, it can run uh, Ubuntu, it can run uh, Fedora uh, and a few other things uh, that is basically images made from NanoPi. But what a lot of people don't actually know is this can actually run OpenSense. Um, I'm going to share this with you now. The project that I'm talking about is called Personal BSD. So I've got it open here. So this is the uh, project page uh, and I've spoke to a few of the guys that contribute to this project uh, they're really nice and they're really passionate about you know bringing open source software onto these devices such as OpenSense so here is a post from 2023 so it's a little bit of an older post uh, and this is free BSD on the Orange Pi 5 Plus and if you go into some of the GitHub, some of the things that they've been working on is obviously the drivers for the uh, NICs and uh, things like that because BSD straight out of the box doesn't support a lot of these device, uh, devices. Um, you can run OpenSense on ARM but it's not as common as x86. So that's the Orange Pi 5 and if we go down a bit this is the NanoPi R5S. Uh, and this as well can run OpenSense, but the way that you run Open, the way that you run OpenSense, is by using a UEFI image called TanoCore, and the UEFI image allows these other images to boot, um, similar to U-boot and a few other things. So this is the mirrors page, and if we go into right up to the top. You can see here that this, I'll go back again, um, you can see here that this is the different chips. We've got the RK356 and then that would be the 68, uh, the RK3588 which is the orange pie uh, and then the RK3399. Now the NanoPi M, uh, R, now the, the NanoPi R2 the NanoPi R4S actually is an RK3, RK3399 chip. So if we go into that, we've got different images here. Uh, we've got the SD, SDK, but there's actually a image library of pre-built images. Uh, and I will post a link to it. If I go to, these are some of the um, co contributors. If I go to devices, it will say here, what's working and what's not working uh, so this is the R rock so this is the NanoPi R4S uh, it's saying it's got USB uh, video is not but there's a few other things uh, it doesn't actually have video anyway so that that's fine but you can download the image for this so if I go to downloads uh, you'll see here that some of the pre-built images for OpenSense 2022 right here is the NanoPi R4S and we can just click download and that's going to open in my free download manager click download and that's going to download and we burn this exactly the same as we would a, um, a, a OpenWRT image now I've actually already burnt this image onto an SD card here so I've already burnt that and put that in you burn it the same way just e extract the image 
or just put it straight into Belina Retro and or Raspberry Pi Imager and burn it straight to an SD card. But there's actually another another page that I need to mention because when you plug this in, it it will have a lot of the OpenSense features that that you need. But the updates are going to be different to the x86 updates. So you actually need to change the mirrors to the ARM64 up, um, ARM64 mirrors. And there's actually another page that I'll share with you now, uh, which which has these mirrors on it. So this is the blog page, uh, which has a lot of the instructions and a lot of the um, up-to-date information on some of these builds. Here you'll see this is the um, YRZR blog, uh, and this is the link which I'll obviously include in the description below. Uh, and here, um, I don't know how, how to pronounce this, I'm going to say Yazza, I'll just say Yazza. Um, Yazza's actually made an entire guide about uh, the install process and then what to do after to configure it. So this is a great guide and I definitely recommend um, you do that. So here is the instructions to download the um, ISO image. The, the it's actually an ARM64 Arch RPI image that it's built on. Um, so yeah, burn the FreeBSD image. This is if you were going to set up it for, from FreeBSD, but we're not. We're going with a pre-built OpenSense image. So after this is all done, you'll come down to the mirrors below, and here. Um, Yazza is talking about changing the the OpenSense um, firmware to to this here, which is FTP. Uh, this is actually changed now. Uh, it's not .tk. Uh, the .tk domains were a free domain uh, that no longer exists. I think because of scammers and, and stuff like that. Don't worry. This this website's fine. It's just they used a lot of these free domains to um, you know set up quick websites and things like that. So this is obviously going to change, but it will be linked below uh, to the actual GitHub um, from from Yaza um, himself or herself. I'm not too sure if it's a female, um, but yeah, this this is where we can change the actual packages and where they're going to download from. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, again, read through some of this because it's going to be very helpful uh, if you want to if you want to use this. And I would say that. If if you have a separate network, I wouldn't recommend using this as your daily daily driver, um, mainly just because of the it's more of a hobbyist project. But if you have a separate network, say you've got a kids network, or you've got um, I, I'm doing it for one of my friends at the minute. He wants all of the devices on different um, networks, so he wants the main. Uh, him and his wife on one network, the kids on the other network, the guests on other networks. So he wants it segmenting. This can really come in handy. If you've got a little device like this, you can set up another router just like this and have a separate network that you can manage. Uh, and the good advantage is the power consumption. This is only 5 volts, which is, which is nothing. So what I'm going to do is get this plugged in and we'll see see what it's like after it boots up okay so there we have uh, the star page which is uh, a self-signed certificate uh, 192.168.1.1 if we also go into control panel uh, we can see it there as well we've got an IP address of 101 uh, and we can see here that the packets are going back and forth so let's do advanced and then through and then it's just like OpenSense, which is root, and then OPN, and then it's sense. So this is the first time that I've booted this up, so you're going to get exactly the same as you would uh, if you booted up a non-ARM a, a non image. So primary DNS servers, um, we're going to leave that. What we're going to do is connect, connect up another cable I just want to show that the internet is working
Okay, so I've plugged in the uh, the cable now, so we'll probably get internet in a second. Um, we're going to leave. We're going to pick Greenwich Mean Time, I think. Let me go Europe, London, Europe, London next. Yeah, and there we are. We've got internet up and running. Uh, leave that like that. We'll leave that and that for now. Um, we'll set a password. Next. And then reload. So th this is where I was mentioning if we go to system firmware updates let me just check where it's trying to pull the updates so the mirror it's trying to pull from OpenSense arm so that's actually not too bad but we can change this mirror to pull from the um, to pull from Yazza's blog because he updates his GitHub uh, quite a bit. So let me go to the GitHub page. Yeah, so Christopher, that's his name, Christopher. So here he's got quite a lot of stuff uh, to do with the images. Uh, and the different builds and, and the packages and the updates and things like that. So, again, y you can go with the mainline uh, Arch, but if you want to do a little bit more advanced stuff um, and you know, for things like plugins and packages and stuff like that, then I would recommend changing it to um, Christopher's repository. And that is going to be in... The blog post I think he's on the app uh, Nanopi R6s so here here as well it talks about if you want to install it on the Nanopi R6s you've got to use this uh, EDK2 firmware basically you burn this to the SD card and download the image, burn it to a USB, boot from the UEFI firmware, like it, it mentions here, then you boot into almost a BIOS, uh, select the boot manager, and then select the uh, USB, and then what it will do is boot from the USB, and then you can run uh, the install uh, instead of just like you would if you were booting to an x86 you would sign in and you would run uh, installer and then open sense have another usb plugged in that you install to and then that it will boot from that continuously um, so this would this is the old repo but i will get an updated version of it uh, the updated version of this repo. I might even send a message to to Christopher and ask him what is the updated version for it so for this video, uh, and kind of get some input from from him if he's not busy. So there, it it has picked up a few packages and plugins. Um, if I go to updates, settings, community. Uh, that's that's fine. Status. So actually, this is already configured to run from the personal BSD um, mirrors. So that's perfect. We're actually going to leave that and then run the updates and see where we get to. I also want to download some some themes. So what, after this runs, I'm going to see if I can download some dark themes. So this is this is the overview for it with nanopi r4s uh, and then it's six cores six threads uh, it's got four gigabytes of ram 
and it's only using 454 megabytes so it's not using much and at, at idle it's using like zero percent of the cpu uh we're running at gigabit speeds here but again if you install this on the, the nanopi r6s or r5s you're going to get the 2.5 gig uh, network speeds yeah and we've already got dark theme installed so that's perfect so that was my video on OpenSense on ARM. Please let me know if you would like me to make a video on the install process for the NanoPi R6S and R5S. The install process is slightly different. So uh, again, it's not as easy as the NanoPi 4S. That's pretty much burn the SD card and just set up and go in like I've shown there. I'm also going to be putting some of this, uh, some of these devices through their paces. Uh, I'm going to be setting up a separate network and i really want to see if it's possible to run OpenSense on arm um, full time in your home lab the only issue with these devices is they're not actively cooled so when it gets to about 50 devices it starts getting a bit warm uh, it would be nice to have an option to have a case with a fan but yeah that's what nanopi have made so we're gonna have to work with that and i'll see you very soon